Good evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you information about your library and your community. And this evening I have Stacy Peterson from the Peoria Public Library Programming Department with me and we're going to talk about all the exciting programming coming up in July. Hi Stacy. Hi Tricia. <laughs> I'm surprised I could get you to stop running around and come and talk to us. Oh we're so busy with summer reading and I know. programs. <laughs> so much going on and that's why I wanted to have you come because now that the libraries are finished and done all our meeting rooms are open and operating and they're packed every day. There is so much going on. So I'm gonna start with Maybe you can tell me a little bit about summer reading and then we'll, because that's the, our overall summer program mm -hmm. and then we can go off and talk about all the other things going on. You bet. You bet. We're very excited. We have such an exciting theme for summer reading this year. Uh, as always, summer reading is open for all ages, little bitties all the way up to adults. The theme is reading is so delicious. And uh, food, that's hard to beat. I mean, food <laughs> and reading, that gets people going. So It has cr created like <laughs> kind of a tidal wave of creativity with the food <laughs> theme, <laughs> theme. It has created a lot of creativity and as well as a lot of research. We've done a lot of research for this, a lot of taste testings. Mm -hmm. uh, um, involving cooking classes and movies and just all different kinds of events that are tying in food, the library, and there's stuff going on, as you mm -hmm. said, at all of our locations. It's just incredible to yeah. have all these facilities at our, at our disposal for yeah. the public. But it all starts with if you want to be a summer reader, yes. challenge yourself. You just go to our website, you mm -hmm. click on that. You can't miss it. It's a can't very it. books and food logo, bright and colorful, yep. click on go to a login page and you sign in and that's where you will go back every week every week log your hours log your at hours at the end of the at the end of the completion if you've completed all those things we will invite you to a party on August 4th at the zoo and we're also going to have a special um, availability to go into Luthi Botanical Garden that day. It's going to be really exciting. Well, that's that's new, and the fact that you can go all day on a Saturday. We used to have a private party for a couple hours at night, and right. people would say, you know, I can't get there. I have a conflict, and and also you had to be at the party to win one of our super duper grand right. prizes. That we have so many great people that donate prizes. Want to rattle some off real quick? Oh my gosh, we have tickets from the Peoria Symphony. We have gas cards. We have movie cards. We have things from. Fort Forest Park Nature Center. We've got a Y membership. We have movie cards. We have, oh my there, gosh. I think there's like a dinner for 10. There's a dinner for 10 from the Olive you can Garden. Win. A box at the Chiefs game. Yeah, you can I win mean, a box. Relics has given us some of their oh charming my gosh. things. They've gift given bag. us a bag just stuffed I think you can get goodies. Get a facial. You can get a facial. You can get um, popcorn and sodas at Landmark Cinemas. I mean, but th but this really. year, as long as you finish your your six out of seven weeks right. and logging in, your name's in the drawing. You don't have to come to the party if you don't want to. No, we'd love and to have you come to the party. Yes, you can we want and, you to. And we're going to have special library people there at the zoo for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. doing some special things, kind mm -hmm. of a VIP area. But if that doesn't work with your schedule, maybe your kids have a game that day, or you're you're doing something with your family stop into the zoo at any time yeah. and, and you can come in and enjoy all of the exciting new things that are going on at the zoo at that yeah. time because that's a place that's ever changing as well yeah. so we are very very excited about this party well and and there's so much going on i want to move on yeah. but and and people have already missed the kickoff with the the uh, dean of juggling yes and they've already missed the taste the book edible book festival but they can see those on our facebook page but there's still a lot more coming like oh my gosh we've got um susan waltrip the hy dietitian is doing story times and in these story times she's incorporating a healthy snack and teaching kids how to use healthy ingredients in the kitchen and she's done a very very good job of incorporating a story time and a little nutritional lesson and the kids walk away pretty full that's been a very exciting thing that we've continued there are two movie series going on right now one at McClure and then if you are closer to the North Branch the McClure films are on Fridays the North Branch films are Thursday afternoons they are all food related uh, those are very exciting we've had a lovely turnout in that North Branch in the McKenzie room there's really nothing better than watching a movie in July heat in the nice <laughs> in cold the nice air conditioning cold. in the dark it's just wonderful I just think about that how that nice that'd be if you've been at the pool for swimming lessons you've been gardening and yeah you it's can go sit in the quiet dark 
and just enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. We're having crafts um, and edible crafts for p kids of all ages and story times at all of our branches. Uh, so every, really literally everywhere that you go at any yeah. of our branches on any given day. There'll be something happening. There's going to be something yeah. happening and usually it's going to be food related. So yeah. you could probably get away with snacking around the library <laughs> never, and checking out books. Never go to the grocery right. store. <laughs> <laughs> never turn on the oven. Well, and the way people find out about these is through kid events. There's a paper newsletter, oh. kid events you can pick up and it's out now for July. You can mm -hmm. get all the July events. Passages, our newsletter will, will come out and you can pick that up and get it. Or there's always a web calendar, PeoriaPublicLibrary.org, mm -hmm. that has a calendar that you can click on the event and get the full scoop on what's going on. So And our digital newsletter. Yeah, which we you have can a digital newsletter. And if you're in the library, you can see our digital signage has yeah. many of the events coming up. So it's there's a lot to keep track of so that's why we have a lot of ways to find out about it, it yeah truly and, and not just our summer reading program but all the other offerings yeah. that we have coming year up round, in july year too. Round. yeah year we round. should mention the gallery what's in the gallery we should mention the gallery we have a very talented person on staff her name is amber lowry she has a fascination and a talent for crochet she has uh, donated many, many countless man hours to our new display called Cooking with Crochet. <laughs> and they are non-edible textile treats. Uh, we urge anybody to come to the gallery space and see, I believe at last count, it was over 600 pieces. 650. Over 650. 650. And the reason yeah. it got that way is partly our fault because yeah. we would watch Amber crocheting and we'd go, can you make this? And yes. she would say, no. And then she'd come back the next day. And the, the last thing we challenged her was with a turkey. And there is indeed a crocheted whole turkey. A whole turkey. In our gallery. In fact, but, not just a turkey, a Thanksgiving feast, right. I'd like to say. But it yes. is colorful and it is bright. And everybody of all ages <sighs> is absolutely going to be amazed that anybody could do all this. They would. They will be amazed. Over 200 hours of yeah. time. I can't believe she even has any feeling left in her fingers yeah. at this point. It, the gallery looks, in a word, it really looks fun. I mean, yeah. I hate to make it sound very simple, but you can't but this, walk this in there. But this is a great family exhibit. It is And great. you have a, a gallery walk that I do. people can go on. What's the date? I do. It's the second Wednesday of the month, and people can come down, visit the gallery. I'll walk them through whatever is currently on display. We will change this, of course, almost every month. And then they'll get a suggested reading list. At the end of the tour, I will take them up to the Friendly Finds down one floor to the Friendly Finds <laughs> Bookstore, a completely volunteer-run organization for the Friends of the Peoria Public Library. And they can do a little browsing, a little shopping, and, and just check that space out. And they'll out. probably be hungry and buy, want to buy one of the many used cookbooks. Exactly. exactly. Uh, let's move on from food. I'm getting oh, yes. hungry. On from food. What we are some of the other, for adults, what are some of the exciting adult programs we have coming? Well, this is adults, and, and this is an all-ages thing. Okay. For the first time ever, we have a, a band, a very unusual band coming from Lewiston, Illinois, um, the Lewiston High School Tube Band. And I say that it's for all ages because if anybody's seen a Blue Man Group performance, it would be right up your alley. Um, due to budget cuts in the music program a few years ago, their director had to get creative, and he decided to go out and buy some PVC pipe. And they put on such a show, these high school kids. They make music, and it's kind of loud, it's cacophonous, but it's fun. They even have a rocket that launches Twinkies, although I don't know if that's <laughs> going to make an appearance at the North Branch, but that will be going on in July. Um, you can look for us at the Heart of Illinois Fair. That's going to be very exciting. Again, the bookmobile will be out there. Um, members of the Peoria Public Library staff will be manning that. You'll be able to come in, get out of the heat, uh, use some of our computers. Yeah, just you can use the computers, the public computers. You can look at magazines. You can look at books. You can apply for a library card. Oh, my gosh. There's yeah. It's, it's you know so many things, but mostly it's a chance for all the people who've seen the bookmobile drive by and never got to see the inside, and it'll be there every evening and then on the weekends and on the afternoon. So yes, it's gonna be fun. We also have we're focusing on some programs for older adults as well. Mm -hmm. um, be on the lookout. The dates haven't been firmed up yet, but we're going to be doing some on health issues, specifically one relating to eye health. That's going to be coming up shortly. Um, yeah, I also, think that one's in August. It's in August, so mm -hmm. that's on the horizon. Also an armchair traveler series that we're going to have where you can come in and hear people talk about all their voyages, which will be really a fun mm -hmm. kind of adult you know, show and tell, so mm -hmm. to speak, for that. Uh, we've got a, a Batman film series coming up. Probably with bats. With live bats. And that's going to be on July 23rd, Incredible Bats. You'll be able to see some fruit bats in the library. 
we figured we had bees, so we might as well might bring some bats. bats. Too. I mean, yeah. make it crazy. And uh, we'll have a Batman cartoon film festival for some of the younger kids as well. Um, and that's in time. Get ready. See all the movies and then go see the big box office when it opens Batman. You'll be. And the thing about watching them at the, movie, at the library instead of at home is no matter how big your TV is, it's still not going to be as big as our screen. Exactly. And you're not, it's probably like going to the drive-in when you come to it the really old drive-ins because it's huge and it's digital projection and digital sound. And, and with those light blocking screens, it can be mm. the middle of the day and you feel like you are just in, in a bat cave. Yeah. <laughs> it's so and nice it's, and dark. And it's free. And it's so, free. Yeah. Free air conditioning, so, free well, movies. Watch all the Batman movies, go to the theater, yes. come back. You can get to see the live bats. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you've got another very, very special treat, Peoria's own. Robotics Club? Yes. We have a robotics club starting at the North Branch due to a wonderful gift from our friends of the Peoria Public Library. Uh, we actually purchased some incredible things for these wonderful, science-minded, 9 through 14-year-olds. Yep. Lego Mindstorms. And the, oh, the yeah. kids that know... What that is will be over the moon, the yes. fact that they can come and do this. And they can they basically will take over the library for mm -hmm. this because they need the space. And it's going to be science in action. That's that's going to be something that, as we know, we, yeah. we don't know of any, anybody else doing something like no, this. No, and they, they will have some engineers and teachers there. They're going to let the kids solve the problems themselves, but they will ask them probing questions and guide them. Mm -hmm. But they will be given, there will be a new challenge every month. They'll, they'll build the robot, yeah. they'll program it, and then they'll try and meet the challenge. And it'll be things like, you know, make your robot follow the line, or right. can your robot get out of the maze. But they, I, I don't do Legos. I'm the farthest thing from an engineer you could get. But there's a thing called a brick computer that apparently the kids know all about, and these are really exciting. And, of course, the kids stay there. You have to come back the next month right. to do it again. But... That one, we strongly encourage registration because space is limited. We think it'll be popular. Yeah. So if you want your child to get into that, call and and uh, get that set up so that they can be sure they have a spot. Definitely. Oh, on another level, for a public event, we have a cash dash event. Um, the mm -hmm. state treasurer always likes to do these in public spaces have people come in and grab that unclaimed cash that might be sitting out there. That's going to be at the main library. And the interesting thing about that, it's going to be on July 10th, the state treasurer will actually be in attendance for wow. that. So it's going to be kind of a celebrity event and a chance to maybe get a little bit extra spending money in your pocket for that yeah, summer to trip. To see what, what money you forgot about that you left in a bank account somewhere. It may, just, may have been left to you somewhere. So. Yeah, yeah, exciting. But one of the events that I'm the most excited about um, is with kind of a local legend. We we are very happy with some of our local legends we've hosted in the past, mm -hmm. most recently being historian Norman Kelly. And this packed time... Packed the house month after oh, month. Packed the house. and He's it, been a frequent guest on this show, and so I'm sure we'll have him back soon. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yes, he's been a longtime supporter of the library, used our facilities many times over for his writing. And his friend, Royce Elliott, is going to be coming out uh, Norman will actually be hosting the evening, but Royce Elliott is going to come out and tell a few jokes and talk about his experience as a comedian on the comedy circuit, the Las Vegas clubs, and, and traveling to the Poconos and Branson and the famous people that he's met. And if anybody listens to Royce and Roger on WOAM in the morning, they know that he's just engaging and really a fun guy. And rarely do we get the chance to see him in this kind of a setting. So we're just thrilled and honored to yeah. be able to host that event. That will be. That's that's a, a big, exciting event, and I have a feeling that evening will be packed. It will be. It'll be Monday, July 9th at 6 o'clock, and I'm going to tell everybody, get there early and get your seat. Get your seat. It's going to be packed house. And be absolutely ready. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything else you can think of coming up in July? Oh, goodness. Well, we have um, so much stuff with with eyeglasses. We do. We've got one of our popular story times we have, especially mm -hmm. at Lakeview, is When I Grow Up. And the children's librarians there have been featuring different professions. And we also have an eye doctor coming in, Dr. Tim Cundiff. He is actually going to be part of this series, When I Grow Up, Eye Doctor. But he has a very special and specific story time uh, revolving around a woman named Princess Peepers. He will actually <laughs> be the prince, even though I might not... Why am I not supposed to be saying that? But they'll be doing that at all four of our library. Well, they'll be doing it at McClure, at North Branch, at Lakeview, and I think at Maine in July. You'll have to be on the lookout for that. So yeah, he's, 
fun oh, because glasses amazing. can be such an issue. You got kids that don't need glasses that want them, and you got kids who have to wear glasses who don't want them. And, yeah. And so Princess Peepers is is going to be a lot of fun. It will be a lot of fun. But we have people may not realize we have story times for even newborn babies, and the reason you do that it's so important to get your child interested in that interaction and the storytelling, and you know they. Mm -hmm. We've always advocated reading to your child in utero, even right. because they hear your voice, they, the melodic sounds of you know reading a story, and so even a tiny baby can enjoy and learn from and grow from mm -hmm. that gathering. Plus, the moms love it. The moms, it, love the moms it. who are home with a little one, and that can be their you know one of the few times they really get to socialize with yeah. other people who have little babies. But we have you know toddler, and it, the librarians are so fabulous about changing what it is for the age group. You know, you may have finger plays like Itsy Bitsy yep. Spider, and then it, it keeps getting better right up to we have uh, rejuvenated our middle school book discussion group, and they're meeting this summer, and we'll go on into the fall, and the kids pick the books. They're yeah. gonna pick their own name. That group's meeting at Lakeview, just as it, it used to. Um, Diane Happ, who was our librarian for many years who ran that, has retired. Mm -hmm. So we have a new librarian ready to take on those fairly big shoes to fill. Yeah. And um, it'll be fun, though. And that's so important at that age to let middle schoolers start having some control over what they read and what they talk about. And in the world of young adult literature, it seems that kids are getting, younger adults are really getting vocal about what they want to read. There's a mm -hmm. lot to choose from now and a lot of issues that seem very pertinent to their daily lives. Yes. So it's neat to see them carry that into their discussions and, and see that dialogue happen at that age. It is. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's very exciting. Um, you have a lot of things that you're working on coming up, and I think we should give people a look at what's what's what can they look forward to in the future. Well, building on the success of our recent local author fair, we're actually going to have a holiday open house, and I know it's hard to think about Christmas in July, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, so we're going to have some more authors at the North Branch. They're going to be reading from their works. It's going to be a great time to do some purchases for Christmas. Moving back, we're going to have spooky story time at North Branch around the fireplace uh, on Wednesdays in the month of October. We're also going to be starting a series called Music in the Mackenzie. And on Sundays at the North Branch in the Mackenzie Room, we're going to be doing about once a month an acoustic kind of version. We're bringing in musicians from around the Midwest and they'll be performing. We have about four groups lined up for that. Uh, we also are going to have a traveling film festival. So you'll be able to also you know, travel the world and not leave West Central or Central Illinois. That's going to be very exciting. Our art gallery is going to be packed all the way from now until the end of the year. We have a Building Common Ground exhibit that will be coming in August. And in September, we're partnering with the Illinois Art League for their members show. So we're going to have wonderful local talent on display then. In October, uh, which is going to be the month of the arts in Peoria. Peoria is going to have a very big push within the arts community. We're going to be featuring a woman who used to live here, who worked at Forest Park, who is now relocated to St. Paul, Minnesota. Her name is Kay Helms, and she's going to bring some incredible photographs for the month of October. And then November, we're going to be working for a veterans art show in the gallery, and we will have programming along with this. This will be artwork done by veterans, female and male, either hobbyists or those who have used art as therapy upon coming back from their experience in the military. And how do, if people are interested in that, how do they find out about how to enter? They can certainly contact the programming office. They can call our number at 309-497-2120, and we can provide you with any of the information or get you in contact with the people who have the forms for that. We'd love to see entries for that. And one question that may come up, does the artist have to be living? No, the artist doesn't have to be living. They don't. We, um, we, the only thing we really ask is that the artist was a veteran and that their pieces hang ready. So <laughs> we want to be able to put it on display and really preserve the integrity of the piece. But no, we, we encourage any submissions so we can truly make this a center for community art. Do you have space for 3D artwork for we the do. veterans art? We have wonderful cases, incredible display cases, and we have a lot of room. And again, we encourage anybody to come down and take a look at that space. Or if they're, they have a piece of artwork and they're curious as to whether their piece will fit, again, they can call 497-2120. We're happy to take a look at the artwork and see if it would fit the space that we have available. Now, if um, 
you're going to do that, will it list where people served or who they served with or dates of service or unit? Or? We would like to do that. If they, can, if they provide us with that information, we would like to have that. So the tenure of their service, whether or not they're still active, um, and anything that they would want to share along with that piece. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Because in the past, we've, in November, so often in our old gallery that was upstairs and just down the hallway, we had some, you know, some interesting things, but I do know the veterans that come in always want to know. I think they're looking for friends. I think they're looking for people they may have known or served with that they've lost track of. But yeah. that was always a popular point as, as who's here. So I think I think that exhibit will be absolutely wonderful. It'll be nice. We're also going to have a reception for any of these, for the for that, for Kay Helms, but we will be having opening receptions. It, the receptions are really nice. They're a nice way to acknowledge the artists, but as you said, it provides them the opportunity to build onto the community that they already have and find the support and friends that may have those shared experiences. So it exactly. it's really winds up being a really nice party for everybody involved. We're yeah. so happy to host it. Yeah. And um, I don't want to rub people's you know, nose in the fact that they've missed so many exciting things. But I would like to review a little bit about some of the highlights. We've, our gallery and our you know, spaces have been open a year, and we have had some incredible moments at, everywhere yeah. uh, things that have gone on and I, I think it would be fun to just kind of look back and see this last year while the other branches were still opening Maine and North were open and you guys were packing them with stuff even though we had staff at funny places and we had you know we had all the books from Lakeview oh were gosh. at North and everything was crammed everywhere in yeah. Rooms and, yeah crammed everywhere we had we had all the book discussion groups were crammed into those two locations and now many of yeah. them have gone to what they consider their homes you know where they where they were comfortable but going back I, remember it was just um, last fall we had the chow art exhibit the Chow Art Exhibit, those wonderful Central Illinois artists, and from that we had that incredible mobile that was built specifically for the atrium, mm -hmm. and that, it was an incredible, that was a wonderful way to bring that arts community in, but they had already, many of them had already participated when that gallery opened. Yes, you know, upon but the it was just, we just kind of, when we were opening, we weren't real sure when we were opening, it was hard to do a real show, but we just put yeah. a call out, artists who live here bring something, and they did, and that was a fabulous show. It was very diverse and very scattered. The Chow Art Show yeah. was the first time that the Chow artists had been all able to display their work in one place because they usually let us see what they're doing with those first Fridays. Mm -hmm. In their studios. Yeah. And then from there, we moved on to the quilts and the stoneware, yes. which was really a staggeringly beautiful exhibit in that space. It was. Um, we had the... Oh, the Illinois Quilters Guild, was that the name of the organization? It's the Prairie, Prairie, Gems. Prairie Gems. Prairie Gems. Prairie Gems. Gems of the Prairie. Gems of the Prairie. Gems of the Prairie. Sorry, Beautiful it's been a while. Work. Yeah, and they, we had some incredible programs that went along with that. We did. And then we had the stoneware, not only from a private collection, but also on loan from the Peoria Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And the two just really, it was a wonderful way to see functional artwork in a gallery space. Yeah. And that yeah. was that brought in a lot we of We still people. have people commenting about that. And then as we went into the spring, mm -hmm. Preston Jackson brought his sculptures. Oh, and other amazing African-American artists from central Illinois. We had a beautiful display for Black History Month. And yeah. Preston had pieces at all library yeah. locations. It's just, it's just rare to see his pieces all gathered like that in, in one place. And it was a beautiful compliment to the things hanging on the walls that were just... Fabulous. And we had a lot of school children who came in and toured that event yes, too. Yes, yes, they did. Mm -hmm. They did. And then, of course, in the past, for many, many, many years, we've always hosted the um, Mid Illini High School Art Show. We mm -hmm. didn't have that, but no. we had Aaron Schock. We did. We had the 18th District Congressional Art Show. Uh, Aaron Schock had it at the library. He's hosted it at several different locations around Peoria. But boy, close proximity to his office, a wonderful space. Any high schooler in his district was allowed to participate, juried into it, and we had a lovely piece that was selected from, I believe she was from Dunlap, that's hanging in the halls of the Capitol as we speak. Yeah, that was a great show. It was a show. Wonderful, wonderful. And then from that show, we went right into one that we'd had a long-term partnership with. Yes, forever. The, yeah, the Peoria Historical Society's 48th Annual Rennick Art Show. And 48 years. 48 years. And with the exception of the last two. Yeah, what, you they, know. we didn't have a gallery space, so yeah. they had to 
move somewhere else. But they have, for 48 years, had used the gallery upstairs. And then when we started taking down walls and things, they, we kind of put together something downstairs on the yeah. main floor for them. But it was such a big space to fill and so beautiful that they even had to expand what they show. They did. They expanded their mediums and they were so excited about it that they can't wait until next year. Yeah. So we had a lot of people who had not had the opportunity to see our space before, but because of their affiliation with the Historic Society and maybe their submission into the Rennick show, it got them into the library and they were just amazed. They loved seeing that work and it looked lovely in that space. Yes, and I, I think that's the thing is before we filled that little tiny gallery we had upstairs, and now that people can see how their work will be treated, how it will be displayed, mm -hmm. I think many more people are going to be interested in entering entering that. And I think it's yeah. take on new life. And we're doing things like we could never do receptions before. It's pretty pretty accepted that when you open an art show, the mm -hmm. artists will all be able to have a reception. The Chow artists had one. Mm -hmm. um, we had that gallery packed with people when Aaron Schott came to announce the winners oh of my. His, yeah. <laughs> the Congressional Art Show. And so it, it, has, it has been crazy, mm -hmm. but um, it is such a gorgeous space. And as we said right now, you can see the exhibit that's in there now is our crochet, Cooking with Crochet. Cooking with Crochet. Yeah. Tasty textile Don't treats. Don't eat the treats. <laughs> Don't eat the treats. Don't eat the treats. <laughs> Stacy. we are out of time. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Uh, you can get right back to getting on the phone and work, work on that email and getting all these fabulous people in for us to enjoy. I'm on it. <laughs> There's so much going on, and I'll remind you again that you can still sign up for summer reading. You need to read six out of seven weeks during a party pass. You want to get going on that. Many, many prizes you can earn at PeoriaPublicLibrary.org or at any library location. So many things coming up, and if you've lost track of everything we talked about, you can pick up kit events or passages, sign up for our e-newsletter, look at the digital signage, or just call us up and ask. Everybody has a call center. They'll be with you right away and tell you the details of whatever event you're looking for. They're all free. They're for all ages. We may be one of the few places that constantly offers free, family-friendly events, everything from story times for the whole family to um, the art displays to musical programs. So there's just so much going on. You can't wait to see all this stuff, and we can't wait to see you at Peoria Public Library. We'll see you next week on Information, Please.